What is up my bodyweight warriors? Welcome back to another video. Episode 10, I actually got the right number this time, of Bodyweight Basics. We are back doing some morning mobility. This is a little side note for you. If you wanna get flexible, if you wanna speed up those mobility gains, doing some short form of mobility in the morning is a really great way to make that happen. Especially more dynamic sort of stretching, more kind of movement stuff that's in like my five minute mobility routine, something along those lines. It's a great way to get joints moving. And as I said, speed up some of that mobility practice. But anyway, I think it's time to just grab some coffee. The usual bulletproof coffee, or well, half normal coffee, black coffee, and then half bulletproof coffee, butter, MCT oil, and then some chaga cordyceps and panax ginseng in there. I did get quite a few questions last time about this, so what I'll do in the description down below, I'll link to the exact kind of products that I use. I use a brand called Navi Organics, which are one of the best quality ones in the UK. I think there's some other ones in like the US and things, but I'll link them down below if you wanna grab yourself some. Also, can I explain to you how weird this weather is currently? Now it's about, I don't know, 12 degrees, kind of sunny, feels warm. It's like a really nice, almost spring-like day. About three days ago, it was about minus five and we had snow, like that much snow, which is just not, I just, we just, just don't, it just doesn't happen. So one thing I did want to talk about in today's vlog is some meal prep. In my opinion, one of the best options is a whole chicken. It's such a good value meal. This chicken here will do sort of anywhere between six and eight meals if you take into account all the different portions of meat there is, as well as if you make it into a stock and then make that into soup or whatever else you're gonna have it with. The concept of meal prep is more of what would be called a buffet style. And this was introduced to me by my friend, Ryan Carza, who has been on this channel in a vlog I did in London with him, which I'll link down below. So basically you pre-cook your proteins, some veggies, and if you need to, some carbs, and then all you do is you have them in the fridge, and then when you wanna have a meal, take it out, you have your protein sauce, you have your veg sauce, you have your carb sauce if you needed, fat sauce, and that's your meal done. And it's already prepped for you, so it only takes about two minutes to create that meal, but you're not in this position where you have all of these boxes of Tupperwares eating the same chicken, rice, and broccoli, add some variety in, but still have that preparation and not have to cook every time. So I'll show you a little bit more by what I mean with this chicken. And that is the chicken. So you've got five portions from one chicken, and then we also have the stock. So in there as well, I've got some onions and garlic, which I roasted it with, and then I'll fill that with water and I'll simmer that for the next four hours. And I have, you know, a couple of liters of sock and that's gonna do a nice big soup. It might just drink it on the side. Like there's another three, four servings of food right there. And all from just one chicken. This right here is another great meal prep option. This is what I mean by about cooking veg and leaving it in. This is a butternut squash. I literally roasted it whole. It takes 90 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. You just chuck it in the oven, roast it, leave it, and then all you do afterwards, you can peel off the outer skin, take out the seeds, and you've got a really tasty roasted butternut squash that will keep for four days in the fridge, and you can throw it on salads, throw it with whatever, and it tastes really good. So as I said, now if I wanted to create a meal, I've got my meat that's already cooked, I've got my vegetable, I've got my butternut squash that's already cooked, all I have to do, put it on a plate and eat it. Although I was planning on doing that, I've now got an invitation out for lunch, so I'm gonna be going out for lunch. But that's, the, the idea was there, anyway. We are back at home. It's a rest day today, but obviously being a rest day, it's not gonna be a complete rest day. I'm still gonna do some hand balancing. It's just gonna be a light session, kind of working through some of the weak points. Currently for my handstand training, I'm doing three sessions a week. Uh, however, Ulrich wants me to do four, but because of how tendon recovery works in terms of cycles, about 48 hours, I'm hesitant to do four. So I'm basically doing three intense sessions and then like one kind of play weak spots weaknesses session which is today hi it's his birthday today he's two 
Some people did ask me what I do for a warm up, so I thought I would share with you three of my favorite upper body warm up exercises using one of these light resistance bands that I do every single upper body session and every single handstand session. This is the first one. This is inspired by Yuri Marmashinus' shoulder rotation exercise. I've put it in my full body mobility routine, so I'll link that down below if you want some more explanation. Uh, but it just works the shoulder for a full range of motion. Great for kind of mobilizing everywhere, basically. Next we have just some shoulder circles, which is kind of, again, following a similar line, but this one's about working the scapula through protraction, elevation, depression, and retraction. So it's just making sho shoulder circles, trying to keep the arm completely straight and just let all the movement come from that scapula. Last but not least, it's some serratus anterior pull apart. So this is gonna be like a normal pull apart, but the difference here is you're maintaining shoulder traction, so you're gonna focus more on the serratus anterior, which is the muscle that runs down here. Again, I've covered this in a previous video about upper body posture, and I'll link that down below as well. In terms of weaknesses for me, head in holds are a big one. If you're looking to progress onto the next level in terms of your hands and try working holds where you tuck your head into your chest so you're taking away that use of sight that you use when you balance. So it makes it a little bit harder in that respect, but it also means you have to force your shoulders open. So I've been working a lot of head in, tuck holds, straight holds, just as well to bring general awareness to my handstand. Another thing that I suck at is flagging to the side. My hips like to do this thing where they just move and that's not how you, you do uh, one-arm handstand. As I covered as well with my interview with Mikel, which I'll link to down below, which is a video about starting one-arm handstands. It's all about the twist and being able to tilt your legs rather than shift them over to the legs. So I'm working a lot on tilting rather than shifting. Oh, and by the way, if you're thinking, hey, that's a nice hoodie that he's wearing. Um, you can you can grab that in the description down below as well if you want to go to my shop and support the channel Was it a hold or was it just a slow fall? <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. Hand side session done. Just a quick 30 minutes kind of going over the basics. Nothing super intense because I've got to do another handstand session tomorrow, um, but it's always nice to grease the groove. There's one last thing I want to mention about the handstand before I get going. And this is something I struggle with myself and that is rest periods with the handstand. Because we're doing quite a taxing move, especially neurologically, it's important that we do rest in between sets. It's very easy just to keep trying, keep trying, and keep trying and kicking up. And you're just knacking your shoulders and you'll actually ruin the quality of your session if you don't rest in between. So. When I actually got, you know, close to holding a one arm handstand then, it was because instead of resting 30, 60 seconds in between, I just gave myself two minutes, thought about it, jumped in when I was ready, and the quality is just so much better. Anyway, it's now about four o'clock. I've got to head out, but I'll catch you later. So I realized yesterday that I didn't actually finish off the vlog, and I kind of felt like I should continue it today. Just to illustrate that point, I talked about meal prep when it comes to creating your meal. So I've got right here this is my breakfast today. I've got chicken thigh with some mashed butternut squash, some feta cheese, and some avocado. So all I've done is I've gone into the fridge, I've got out my protein sauce, I've got out my vegetable, which is the butternut squash, I've also got out some avocado, and then all I've done is put it on a plate, topped it with some feta cheese, drizzled over some avocado oil, and sprinkled over some salt and pepper. And that is 
a meal that took me five minutes to make. So that is kind of how I've been approaching my meal prep, meal creation at the moment, thinking about in blocks. Where's my protein coming from? Where's my veg source coming from? Where's my fat coming from, etc. So I hope you found that useful. Why not leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the meal prep or about the training or about anything, join the conversation. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel so you don't miss out on any of these future Bodyweight Basics series or any of the other videos on this channel. Why not hit that subscribe button and join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.